In the last video, we derived the Navier-Stokes equations. They're shown on this uh, notepad in a slightly different form, again, as the one that we ended up with in the, in the last uh, video. Um, I emphasize that there's many different ways of writing these equations. This is going to be the most appropriate one, though, to, do, to continue with our search for these prototypical equations. And particularly the one that we're interested in in this video is going to be the Stokes equation. So we're going to try to motivate the Stokes equations from the perspective of the Navier-Stokes equation. Now, the Navier-Stokes equations already incorporated some uh, assumptions, the assumption of incompressibility and the assumption of Newtonian uh, fluid. And this was required for our constitutive law. These are definitely assumptions, but they tend to be quite uh, valid. To move towards the Stokes equation, we're going to have to, do, to introduce some more rigorous assumptions. In particular, what we're going to say is that this term is zero. Now, recall that this term was actually the term that was involved in two of our main challenges. This was the term that introduces this advective uh, problem, and this is the nonlinear term. So by dropping this term, we're significantly simplifying the Navier-Stokes equations. Now, when is this a uh, valid assumption? Uh, clearly, uh, in order for this to be zero, either the gradient of u has to be zero or u has to be zero. So typically what we say is that the Stokes equations become valid once we have flow that is creeping, that is moving at a, a very uh, low speed, especially compared to this factor, uh, our, our viscosity uh, coefficient. And so you might think of, uh, of honey. Uh, that's really the type of creep that we're talking about. And in those cases, the Stokes equation uh, may become applicable. So if we drop this term, uh, then we're still left with a time-dependent set of equations. And what I'll also do, although this is not uh, strictly necessary, is I'll, I'll also drop our time derivative. So I'm also going to say we're going to in be interested in the steady case. And if I do this, and if you permit me to move some terms back and forth to the left and the right hand side, then the Stokes equations would look like this. And that the divergence of u is going to be to zero. So we have these two relations. So this is one way of writing the steady Stokes equations. Typically, this is not uh, the standard way that we see this. Um, so one of the things that we, we do is we multiply this by minus 1. We end up with this equation. Now, that's, of course, equivalent. Uh, and then, so this is one way of writing the Stokes equations. But what the, the more typical way that you would see these equations is like this. And the divergence of u is equal to zero. Now, these two equations are equivalent, but there's a little trick to this. And uh, again, this is something that I'm not going to go into too much depth uh, on, but I would like you to be aware of this. And if you're interested, then you can figure out the details yourself. Uh, now, the, the, the difference uh, or the, the challenge here is to write these differential operators uh, into this um, double application of a gradient operator. So this is essentially the gradient of the gradient of u. And the trick here is going to be that if you write out the original statement, the correct statement, uh, then you can factor out some divergence terms. Those are going to be zero. And because of that, we are allowed to rewrite uh, this uh, term uh, into this simplified version. Yeah. So again, the, the, the incompressibility constraint is sort of hidden into our derivation here. Now, that's not something I want to uh, go into too, too much detail on, but I, I think it's important that you're aware of these kind of things. Um, now, that's pretty much actually all I wanted to say about the, the Stokes equations. Um, 
Now I want to show you what these look like if we uh, if we try to uh, solve for these uh, uh, in a finite element framework. So the challenge that we are still left with uh, is no longer the nonlinearity, right? These are uh, linear equations. Also, no longer uh, the advective part, right? We threw that one away. So the problem here is that we have this mixed nature. And the Stokes equations are really the, the benchmark problem when it comes to mixed problems. And mixed problems uh, are problems that involve different uh, variables, different states, and also different sets of equations. Yeah? So this is pretty much the prototypical equation whenever we talk about uh, mixed problems. And this is also something that we saw in the introductory lecture. And it's something that I would like to show you again. Yeah? So this was still from our advection uh, problem. Uh, right, this was this uh, problem that we talked about, uh, that we have to discretize our velocity field and our pressure field with two different uh, meshes, two different uh, choices of elements, and that the results that we obtain from our finite element computation are going to be extremely sensitive to our choices of discrete spaces, to our choices of uh, elements for pressure and for velocity. Right, so we already saw that uh, for particular choices of elements, and this one was called the Taylor Hood. The Taylor Hood element. Then we obtain results that are fine, that are stable. And for many other choices of elements, we obtain results uh, where particularly the pressure field ends up being uh, very, very poor. And this has to do with uh, spurious oscillations, uh, pressure modes. And this is something that we'll also uh, talk about in more detail. An interesting thing here was that despite this horrible shape of some of these pressure solutions, we might still be able to obtain reasonable solutions for our velocity field. Okay, this was a very short uh, video. Uh, we saw that the Navier-Stokes equations uh, can be simplified to the Stokes equation by dropping uh, the nonlinear term, which essentially comes down to a uh, fluid moving at a very, very low uh, speed. And that uh, the key challenge here uh, from a finite element perspective, is going to be their mixed nature.